Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. So I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Blue Ripple. We have a Visconti Divina Desert Spring. A Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. A Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. We have the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. We have the Visconti Camelot. We have a London Pen Company Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula. We have a Visconti Chatterley Luxuries Southwest. And we have a Visconti Luxor Obelisk. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail here. So this is a really beautiful pen. This is the Visconti Blue Ripple. Um, it's very similar to other pens that Visconti made a little bit later called the Visconti Watermark. And uh, the difference is that these are more ripples rather than the Visconti V. And also you have this lovely cracked ice white sort of inlay effect here. And then you have this blue metallic blue overlay that goes over the pen. Now this is um, a beautiful pen. It's it's a little bit weighty, but not too weighty. Uh, this comes with the older style 18 cat gold Visconti nib made by Bock. Uh, it's a um, double reservoir. It's a power vac filler and it holds around about two and a half milliliters of ink. And this really, uh, I find, is very comfortable in my hand here. Uh, you also do have a V here for Visconti that you'll see. And it says Visconti Ripple. And it's 875 of 999. Now, this really is a nice pen. Um, because it's metal, I wouldn't really post this cap. You can, but it makes it very long and a bit back weighted. Uh, I, I like this pen a lot. It's a pen that... I had on my wish list for a long time, and then eventually I have uh, bought the pen. So uh, it's one of those bittersweet moments. It's another pen that has been ticked off of my wish list. Uh, my wish list isn't normally that long. Uh, it's probably about a page of A5, I would say. And every now and again, there's a pen that I do buy, and at that point I tick that off and say, that's it. That one is now in my collection. The next pen here is a pen I had inked up in a previous week. This is the Visconti Divina Desert Spring. This is a celluloid material. It's not a resin. But just look at this material. It really is quite stunning there. And you'll see that this also is a faceted pen. But the facets are not sort of... Uh, the length of the pen, they actually sort of go in a diagonal. So you'll see that way, the way the light reflects off of those facets. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. It's a captured converter here. So basically what you do is you pull this out and then you twist it. It's a converter that you cannot see. So you don't have an ink window on this one. It's There are two models. There was this non-limited edition and a limited edition. I have the non-limited edition model here. Uh, but I like it a lot. The limited edition had an ink window here. Uh, this has a 23 cap palladium medium nib on this pen. And uh, this I really do. I like the size and I like the weight. The only thing that I don't like as much is that obviously a converter only holds around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 milliliters of ink. So from that perspective, I, I do find that I typically do go through ink fairly quickly on this one uh, compared to, I say quickly, compared to maybe these Powervacs or the double reservoir Powervacs. The, the regular Powervac without the double reservoir, the single reservoir, these will hold around about one and a half milliliters of ink. So about double a converter or captured converter. The double reservoir Powervacs hold around two and a half milliliters of ink. So about a milliliter more than this one. So 
uh, you can see there is quite a, a lot of difference in ink capacity, even though the pens are the same size. The next pen I have inked up today, this week, is this one. It's in the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. And uh, this is just the original red marble. They, they didn't actually name this uh, as a particular Medici marble because um, it, it is it's just a red marble. Uh, but this is a marble pen made with solid silver. So this is a heavy pen. And you'll see a silver section here. The nib on here is a 23 cap palladium medium nib. And this is a substantial pen. I love this pen and I love how it writes. So I'm glad that I have this inked up this week and I'm writing with it because this is a pen that is really close to my heart it's it's a beautiful pen and it's a pen that writes well the next pen is uh the third uh, this was the first in the medici il magnifico series then there was a green one and then there was this lapis lazuli and this is uh a, a, again a beautiful beautiful uh pen so this again is a marble or lapis lazuli with a solid silver um, trim and cap and, and power vac knob uh, and section uh, and it's vermilled in, in gold, in yellow gold there. So this has an 18 carat new style Visconti nib. It's a medium nib. Again, this is a heavy pen. It's not a light pen, but again, I love the size. I love the weight, the girth. I love how the pen writes. So Again, this is another one I've had to have inked up this week writing with. I have a lot of pens in my collection and it's difficult sometimes to know which ones to write with and which ones to rotate. I don't actually have a set sort of really process of which pens I will ink up. A lot of the time it's just which color do I want to write with or which pen do I want to write with. And most most pens I will match with the, the pen color, I will match with the ink color. Now, I've not written with this one for a while, and this is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. So I decided I would ink this one up. It's a really interesting pen. The artwork here is absolutely stunning. You can see on that chainmail. So it is the Jacques de Molay, the Last Templar. Uh, this uh, is, it's not a light pen, it's not a heavy pen, but there is a lot of silver on it, but it's not solid silver. Uh, this comes inked with a 23 cap palladium medium nib, but again, I love this pen. It's I love the theme on it. It does have a large step down, but that doesn't bother me. And I do like this pen, so, um, and I've not written with that for some time, so I decided... I would ink that one up as well. The next pen also that I haven't inked up for a little while is this one, and this is the Visconti Camelot. Uh, again, this is a beautiful pen. The chainmail here, the linkage, uh, and the herringbone effect that you see going on there is really beautiful. Um, this, uh, like the Jacques de Molay, is a power vac. Uh, they're both single reservoirs. But, I again, I love this. Um, it has a sword clip there. Not really that functional, uh, to be honest, but it it is quite um, a, a nice pen. I, I do love the gold trims on this pen. And you, know, you can see there, obviously, the, the dome there. of the. I think that really is supposed to be like a helmet. And... If I remove the cap, you'll see there it's got an 18 karat gold medium nib. And this is a uh, lovely, lovely nib. I, I do love how this writes. It's got a bit of a bounce to it. Um, now, in terms of the limited edition here, it is number 979. So that is actually quite uh, an interesting pen to, to have in my collection. So I'm glad I have that in my collection. And inked up. 
the next pen is the London Pen Company, the Christopher in the 15 model. And this is a, a girthier model than the regular Christopher. Uh, it's also sporting the Jonathan Brooks Primary Manipulation 1 material. And you can just see this here. This material is really quite stunning. It's like a, an oil painting. It really is beautiful. So I have this one inked up this week. And you'll see here it has a number six size box nib and that's a broad nib uh, but this uh, is um, really nice in my hand it it feels just right for me um, and I, I like girthier pens as well so for me um, that was another one I decided I would write with this week the other one which I've been writing with a lot actually is this one and I still have this inked up it's the Atelier Luso Carina in the Diamond Nebula uh, I have to say, this is probably one of my favourite Atelier Lusso pens. Um, it, this comes with the Mackenzie diamond cast material, because it has real diamond dust infused within that resin. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. It's a brass clip with a hammered texture to it. And you'll see here, it's got a number six size Yovo broad steel nib. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, same as the um, London Pen Company pen here, but it is a very, very um, nice pen to write with. So uh, again, I, I have that one inked up uh, this week as well. And then I have this pen, and this is the Visconti Chatterley Luxuries Exclusive. This is the Southwest, and this is made of celluloid. It's the same celluloid that was used in the Speakeasy and the St. Basil. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, sort of hue there between red and blues. Uh, a little bit of black merged in. And I love this. I love this material. Now, this comes with a number six size Visconti uh, medium nib. It's an 18 count gold nib. One of the newer 18 count gold nibs. Uh, it's number 20 or 28 there. Uh, you'll see. Uh, this, I find, is really beautiful to write with i love writing with it and for me i i am having trouble not inking that pen up and uh as much as i need to put it back into my pen drawer and, and bring out a few more pens i i really like to have that one inked up another one that i like to have inked up as well was uh my visconti leonardo da vinci machina and i had that inked up for months and months and months and then did clean it out and it's been stuck in my pen drawer ever since so i think this is sometimes the worry that i have is that once i clean out a good pen i put it in my pen drawer and i won't ink it up for a long time so i will probably bring that one out um, in in the near future as well and then a pen that i've not brought out for quite some time in terms of inking it up is this one and this is the visconti luxor obelisk and uh, there were only 88 pens of this made, and it's to basically uh, represent the the Luxor obelisk, which uh, was, uh, one of them was sent from Egypt to Paris, and uh, this is a beautiful pen. It's a Maquier Yerushi uh, over Ebonite, and this is beautiful. You can just see, uh, you can see the, the, the light there, reflection of my studio lights. Uh, it's got a really nice lack of shine to it and if I unscrew this here you'll see it's a double reservoir um, and it's a power vac filler so it holds two and a half milliliters of ink and it's got a 23 cap palladium medium Visconti nib on there. Uh, it's actually fairly lightweight pen because it is ebonite and I like it. I really do love this pen a lot and it's just been a pen I haven't inked for some time. So that's my currently ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen inked up this week is the Visconti Blue Ripple. So I think let's do an ink swatch. Now, I have to say I am liking the colour of this ink. Uh, it is a 
more of a thicker viscosity sort of ink. Uh, it so it can sheen a little bit as well. Um, this is the Visconti, and it's the Blue Ripple. Now the Blue Ripple or the Visconti Ripple actually came in a number of different colours. There was a gold. Uh, I think there may have been a silver or a rose gold and a yellow gold. Uh, this is the blue, um, so it's a blue ripple. And this has a medium, and it's the old style 18 cat gold, and it's the two tone color gold nib there. Uh, the ink in here is um, diamine, and it's imperial blue, which I find is a very nice blue ink. It's a dark blue ink, and I think maybe it matches that a little bit. The next pen is the Visconti Davina Desert Spring. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is inked up with a pink ink. I know it's not a, a brown and orange sandy color. So I do like to match my ink colors, but this is the ink I've always used in this pen. So this is a Visconti Davina, and it's the Desert Spring. And it's a medium 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Pilot Eroshizuku. And it's Satsuji, which for me is a beautiful pink ink. And it was an ink that I inked up in this pen and I like so much that I just haven't changed ink since. And I, I flush it out, but I will just re-ink it with that ink when I want to re-ink the pen. The next pen is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. So we'll do an ink swatch. And... I have had a few different inks in this pen. Uh, typically, I've had Visconti Bordeaux and uh, a few other reds in that. And I have settled with this ink more so. Uh, so this is the Visconti uh, Medici or Medici. And it's Il Magnifico. And it's a medium 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here, it's not a red ink. It is a pink ink, but it's a little bit more on the reddish side. This is um, Pelican Edelstein. And it's Star Ruby. But it's an ink, again, I, I like the colour of the ink, and I like how that ink writes in this pen. So I just, again, I have almost dedicated that pen to that ink. The next one is, again, another Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I've gone through a number of, of different colour inks, and... I typically have liked sort of a little bit of a blue ink with a sort of more of a tinge of, say, lilac or violet. So this is actually quite a nice ink for me. So this is a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. And it's the Lapis lazuli it's got a medium and this one's got an 18 cat gold nib it's a new style nib and then the ink in here is uh pilot iroshizuku and it's aji say aji actually it's s a i i always uh mess that one up but that's a really lovely ink I, I'm finding. 
The next pen is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this, uh, I always have inked up with a grey ink. And this is my favourite grey ink. And this is the Visconti Last Templar. Jacques de Malay. And it is a medium 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is diamine. Oh, gray. The next pen is the Visconti Camelot. So we'll do an ink swatch. And you'll see here that, yeah, this isn't a grey ink, I know, and it's a silver pen, but this, again, is an ink that I really have liked using. So this is the Visconti Camelot. And it is a medium, and I'm just going to have a look. I'm pretty sure it's an 18, yeah, it's an 18 cat uh, gold nib. And the ink in here is uh, Mont Blanc. And it's lavender purple, which I believe now is a discontinued ink from Mont Blanc. The next pen is the London Pen Company Christopher 15. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And I still have this inked up with this beautiful green ink. And it's just an ink that I like a lot. And I like, again, for this time of year. So this is the London Pen Company. And it's the Christopher... 15 and it's in primary manipulation one material uh, this is a broad and it's a bock steel nib and then the ink in here is diamine meadow which is a really lovely grassy meadowy green ink the next pen is the Atelier Luso Carina in Diamond Nebula. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is an interesting color. So this is the Atelier Luso Karina in the Diamond Nebula. And it's a broad Yovo still nib. And the ink in here is Monteverde. And it's Blueberry Muffin. And I may actually start thinking about swapping um, that ink out for Mont Blanc Lavender Purple, putting that in that pen. The next pen is the Visconti Chatty Luxuries Southwest. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a beautiful red ink. Uh, the nib writes quite wet as well, which I also like. Uh, this is the Visconti, and it's the Chatterley Luxuries 
southwest and it is a medium uh, 18 karat gold it's a new 18 karat gold nibs from visconti and this is inked up with mont blanc corn poppy red but that it's a beautiful ink and and i also like the combination there as well and then the last pen is the Visconti Luxor Obelisk. So let's do an ink swatch. And uh, this uh, is an ink that I don't normally ink up in this pen, but this is the Visconti and it's the Luxor obelisk i think it's a is it a k i think um the nib is a medium and it's a 23 cat uh, palladium nib and the ink in here is simply visconti blue uh, i typically do ink this one up with something like either Pilot of Washizuku Compeki or Waterman Inspired Blue. Um, but today, this week, I decided I would ink it up with Visconti Blue. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Visconti Blue Ripple in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Imperial Blue. We have a Visconti Davina Desert Spring in a medium 23 cat palladium nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Satsuji. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in a medium 23 cat palladium nib inked up with Pelican Eagle Sign Star Ruby. We have another Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Ajisei. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Visconti Camelot in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. We have a London Pen Company Christopher 15 with Primary Manipulation 1 in a broad steel nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula in a broad steel nib inked up with Monteverde Blueberry Muffin. We have a Visconti Chatterley Luxuries exclusive in the Southwest in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. And then we have a Visconti Luxor Obelisk in a medium 23 karat palladium nib inked up with Visconti Blue. So there you have it, that's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.